your position of the speculum modified so that you can have a good panoramic view of the cervix. If the lateral balls are bulging, either you can use the lateral vaginal wall speculums, which I have shown it earlier, or another modification which we can you can do is you can use a condom over the cusco speculum with the tip cut it down so that whenever you open up the speculum, the the condom uh, plus the, the layer it uh, stretches the vaginal wall, keeps it separate so that you can have a good wonderful view of the cervix in the center. The next, the steps of the colposcopy. So once you have positioned the cervix, it is now the time to visualize the transformation zone. You have to clean the cervix if there is any mucus and then focus and try to visualize the transformation zone. The next step is the examination under green filter for the vascularity purpose. Then we have to go for an acetic acid application, then you go on And finally, if something abnormal, we have to take the biopsy. So I will be taking these two things step by step. So first thing is, once we have focused the cervix, clean it with the saline. So 0.9% normal saline, which we usually have everywhere in our hospitals, clean the mucus with the saline gently. Don't, we don't have to rub it up because by rubbing we will be displacing the superficial cells. It may start bleeding also. So, so poison swabs are being used. Plenty of saline can be used. And just focus the cervix with the colposcope and 4X or 5X magnification is good enough. So, the any gross lesion, if you can find out at this particular time on the cervix, it has to be notified. So, it's not only the thing, any, anything else like some uh, ectropion, polyp, as it has been discussed earlier also, the botan follicles, leukoplakia, condyloma, any ulcer, and say, something you may come across because you are seeing with the focused under light with magnification. So, anything if it is there, it has to be notified. It has, and in, in the digital versions, we can have a good photograph of that particular. Uh, pathology which we see. Now the next step is localization of the transformation. We know that colposcopy basically we are doing it for the cervical neoplasia diagnostic purposes. So whenever there is something abnormal, suspicious or an abnormal path has come up, now we have to see that thing. So the most, one most important thing is to localize the transformation zone completely so that we can say that our colposcopy is complete or adequate. So if you are able to see the whole transformation zone, the outer margin as well as the inner margin. So we have already discussed the outer margin of the transformation zone is the farthest points of the gland openings. So a, a imaginary line going through the, at the uh, crypts or the gland openings, the farthest all around 360 degree. And the inner margin is the new squamocolumnar junction, means the junction of the pink squamous epithelium of the ectocervix and the red uh, columnar epithelium of the endosomic. So this whole zone, all 360 degree all around should be actually visible to say it that, it adi that, that our colposcopy is going to be adequate. If somewhere, if you are not able to see this inner margin, outer margin we can see all around because we can move the, the cervix here and there. But if you are not able to see the inner lining, the inner squamocolumnar junction completely, you can miss some of the things. So therefore it is important to note, note this particular thing. So transformation zone, as we have discussed, the outer line and this is the inner transformation, the inner limit. Here it has been visible on the ectocervix completely. So in this way, depending on the visualization of the transformation zone, it has been divided into three categories. The type 1 transformation zone is the one which is completely there, visible at the ectocervix, as we have seen in the earlier picture. The type 2 kind of transformation zone is the part of the transformation zone has uh, uh, integrated into the uh, into cervical canal. So you may not be able to see on the first way, but if you are, if you try to open up the endocervix with the help of endocervical speculum, which is there in our table of colposcopy, so partially or fully, uh, pa partially visible uh, um, in a columnar junction, which can be made visualized with the help of the endocervical speculum. This kind of transformation zone is called TZ2. And if the sum of part of the squamocolumnar junction is even not visualized by putting up or dilating and uh, opening up the cervical canal with the help of endocervical scapulum, it means it is a transformation type 3, transformation zone type 3. So 2 and 3 is important in that aspect because in 2 we are able to see and in 3 we are not able to see some part of transformation zone still. So these are the places where it is must to take endocervical sampling because we are not able to see the transformation zone. And it is important to mention it in the report also. So that the and if another person who is looking after the report does not think of that it is just a major or minor kind of an abnormality, that he or she may not, the person who has done the colposcopy is not able to see some part of the transformation zone. And ECC is must in that. 
And now, <coughs> sorry. The next step, once you have seen, visualized, focused the transformation zone. Now the first step goes into is to see the cervix area with the green filter. So putting up a green filter means you are uh, enlightened. This enlightens the blood vessels because the red color takes up the thing and they become more uh, prominent. So enhancement or of the contrast of the vessels is there. So once we put a clean filter, we are able to see the uh, vessels much more clearly and here we have to increase the focus also. Like, uh, this hairpin like of a thing or an uh, abnormal kind of a branching or this corkscrew like of a thing. These things are a willow kind of a branching. These are suggestive of a malignancy. So that's why it is important to, to think of that this gives a finding of a major kind of a pathology, some abnormality. While this is a tree kind of like of branching and dots kind of a thing or a fine kind of a mosaic, this can be a minor kind of thing or even a normal thing. Next step after vascularization, we will remove the green filter, come back to the normal magnification of 4x or 5x and then we will apply the acetic acid. It is important as soon as you plan for applying the acetic acid, put on the timer. So a new colposcope, digital colposcope has a facility to put up a timer uh, and otherwise you, someone has to take up that responsibility that acetic acid has to be applied for a full one minute. You may have to apply it two, three times to have a complete picture and it takes time for cells or nuclei to get the proteins to get coagulated or the cytoplasm to get desiccated so that it becomes white. So what we want to see is the dysplastic things if it is there in the cervix or especially the transformation zone. So we have to give time, full one minute time is to be given applying a good amount of 5% uh, acetic acid over the whole of the cervical area and we can apply it for 2-3 times and one minute has to be given before we interpret the results. So once we have apply the uh, acetic acid, we usually come across some kind of acetovitening if the cells are dysplastic and depending upon the acetovitening, what we have to see in, in case if we find out some of the areas getting acetovite, we have to see the location of the acetovite area, where it is, the, the area which is the extent of the acetovitening, the speed by which it is coming up the grade of acetovitening, so n number of things we have to see in this particular section and this is the major part of the colposcopic findings. So the a localization of the area, the extent of the area which is got acetovite, the grade of the acetovitiness and the speed with which it is coming up. So at the margins of the acetovite area, if it is a geographical kind of a margin of acetovite area, it's, it's a good thing. If it is straight margins or it's, if it is like a uh, uh, straight or we can say a fine kind of a margin so which don't have irregularities. So this is it's suggestive of a major kind of pathology is there. Surface if it is something uh, not flat it is averted or it has a difference in the uh, the height of that particular lesion then it can again is suggestive of some something gross pathological thing. So this is how in this particular section this is a major important part of the thing of the colposcopy after applying the acetic acid. The next step is once you have seen the whole of the acetovitening area and you have noted all the findings, we can take up the pictures of that particular areas which have been got acetovite. Otherwise, we have to draw it on the paper or on a, on a particular section, what areas we have find out like acetovite. The next step is putting up the lugolcytin. Again, we are using 5% lugolcytin solution. A normal sperm, as we have discussed earlier also, normal squamous epithelium contains good amount of glycogen so that wherever the, the, those normal epithelium are there, it takes up the mahogany brown color. While those areas which uh, don't have the new, uh, glycogen, that, that is like a metaplastic epithelium, a columnar epithelium or the dysplastic epithelium or the cancerous areas, they don't take up the iodine. And the grade of the color dis discoloration is also it's it's a gray. It's nothing like some maybe completely yellow, maybe partially brown or something like that. So we this area again has to be identified, and uh, we have to grade the discoloration also. But it is important that significance of iodine staining is judged in relating to the other parameters. Other parameters means if we have found acetovite area in that particular section or not, 
or we have seen at the abnormal patterns or not. So, uh, Lugol iodine testing, which is also called as Schiller's test, is completely, not completely an independent variable, but it has to be assessed or interpreted in association with the whatever the aceto whiteness we have found out on the acetic acid application and some vascular abnormality also have been found out in the earlier steps. So once we have done all the steps, means we have focused, we have identified the transformation zone, put up a green printer, magnify it, see the vascularity, next step acetic acid application, then next step Lugol's iodine application and then once we have identified all the things, we have to score our findings with the help of different scoring system. Uh, the Shikha, oldest, I think the scoring is... Ma 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 the next person. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Are you have 10 minutes now? Yeah. So finally, we just have, we can use any kind of a score. The region score is the uh, oldest one and the most of the people are following it. But sweet score, uh, which has an added fifth point, the size of the lesion and the area involved. So it, it's more uh, a better kind of a...